Hi, my name is Jade. And my name is Johanse. And welcome to our channel, Get, Get Into, Into the, the Black, Black, where we share with you our experience living here in Puerto Rico. Today, as you can see by the title, our video is going to be a one year update about our Airbnb experience. Um, we're going to be going over what we earned and what we learned. And we're going to talk about the regulations and stuff that are coming and that are being considered in the Airbnb short term rental market. And we're going to talk about the Airbnb bus, uh, which is a hot topic. So we're excited to talk about all those things. Yes, yes, because we're the crazy ones who decided to get into this Airbnb game, right? When regulation is happening, the market is so uncertain and people really don't know what's going on. Um, with that being said, one of the things that we want to go over first is just like how many units we have and how many listings. We have three units in total, but four listings. One of our listings, we run more as like a midterm type of situation. We only really do it short terms to kind of fill in the gaps. It's a studio, which uh, we quickly figured out that it competes with a lot of the um, hotels in the area. We would start, but we're like, mm, we're not really making that much money from this and we're paying to constantly flip. Um, it became, more um, advantageous for us to just do it as one uh, midterm rental. And it was funny because yesterday you were like, are we ever going to see the studio again? <laughs> yeah, exciting. We were able to we were able to get another booking for the future. Um, I think in September, October, for October, October, and we are currently in April yeah. and the beginning part of April. So it's exciting and makes me second guess our price is too low i know because we're bucked up currently all the way until august um which i i look constantly we are pretty competitively priced um i don't i don't know i'm always one of those people too I, i'm like are we booked too low are we booked exactly where we're supposed to be <laughs> and the other um listing setup so then there's three more listings which incorporates the other two units which we rent them out separately, but we also rent them out as one package deal. So you can pretty much get the whole house if you have a large group. So I purposely wanted to purchase a home that had multiple units because there's a concept buy once and create multiple streams of income. And so we could buy a single family home but we wouldn't be able to create more income without building on it. And we bought this unit because it was a duplex that was an easy convert into a triplex. And we were able to do that, which increases value. When you're investing, there's a difference between an investor and a retail buyer. Um, retail buyers want things ready to move in, ready to go. So they'll pay the premium for someone else to do the work. But as an investment, we, I wanted to find something that did not need too much work where it was beyond the time and the skill level that we were able to manage, but find something that was going to, if we spend one time, we can create multiple streams of income and stay flexible to the ever-changing market that's coming. If we need to go mm -hmm. uh, long-term, mid-term, or if we need to move in here, we have that option. Yeah. And I think too, with um, having multiple units, it allows us to, to have that flexibility so we can appeal mm -hmm. to an array of different kind of um, customer bases so, yeah. or group sizes, you can say. Um, so we can sleep anyone from your solo traveler all the way as large as your groups of um, 14. So just having that flexibility. And then two, um, because our units are separate, I think that's pretty cool because we can literally rent them out as two different homes, even though logistically and operations sometimes that become a headache um and we actually make way more money renting it out as um one big unit. yes one big unit than renting them out separately uh, which is so interesting because you would think in your head that people would still have the same value base and they will go oh i get half of it so i should pay half that price and it's like no they want to pay the fourth of that price now so um when we started to realize that we're like okay so our strategy like you said has always been to sell the whole house and we're we're really sticking still to um to that idea yeah so let's jump into the numbers so 
we were able to, um, we started in the end of March when we got the first bottom unit um, up and running on Airbnb. And then the second unit came shortly after, which was in It was May. like May, yeah. End of May, we were able to get the second unit up. Um, I oversaw that renovation, which was very interesting. This is the second unit we're in right now. And the third unit came online that June, yeah. uh, once we were able to finish the renovation on that one, which you guys heard this, uh, the story about how we got robbed. That was the third unit, because when we looked at the math and the money, it was time to get all units online because we were actually losing money by just having it sit there. And we, we took that. So uh, the numbers uh, we're going to do, we're going to show you are. Because we started at the end of March, we're not going to count March um, right yeah. now. What we're going to do is just, it's going to be from April, 2023 until march 2024 but keep in mind um with these numbers as well all of our units were not fully um optimized and running at this time like we said some unit was getting rolled out in um may some listings didn't even start like till um june i think even the studio might have not even came out till like late june almost july we made one hundred and five thousand one hundred sixty nine dollars and forty six cents with one year of being on airbnb which is incredible because like we said all units were now fully optimized and running and mm -hmm. that's crazy and last month was our best month which we made over fifteen thousand dollars yes spring break <laughs> so the interesting thing is puerto rico uh, has a hot warm and cold market <laughs> uh, seasons i'm sorry seasons um, and we are, we're, we're trying to gear up for the summer, which in the summer we did, uh, like 7,500 in June. And then we did, uh, 8,900 in July and then August we hit the 10 K mark. And yeah. Yeah. So, and, and then we saw, um, it was like 7,800 for, uh, was that September? Yeah, it just started trickling a little bit down from there because that's when, um, for us in Puerto Rico, you start going into yeah, your seven. slow season. Um, that's when people really, that's where you really start to feel the effects that it is hurricane season, um, yeah. which it starts in June, but people are still traveling because most of the times if a hurricane yeah. does come, it's usually in September. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's like you start to really feel it September, October. November. November, which was surprising. Hold on, let me get to that one. Let me speak on that one. Sorry, <laughs> we were clear that September because we just had um, all the major hurricanes happen every five years, roughly. Um, that is not that is uh, uh, what we've noticed based on um, um, Hurricane Maria and Fiona, which we experienced. So we were expecting September to be the worst month, and it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Our worst month, like I said, for September, October, we did about 7,500 each month. Each month in November, we did $6,400. Yeah. Which, as I scratch myself, I will take responsibility as the, for that one because, too, I also manage the, um, the pricings. And I was not anticipating November being slow until we got to like mid October and I was like wait mm -hmm. we don't have any bookings mm -hmm. so which told me that we were priced way too high I had priced November closer to December instead of pricing it like September and October I think if I would have priced it like as September and October we would have gotten more booking and that's it we'll, we also learned that Jade has to be active the great thing about Price Lab and these pricing tools, they give you some automation, but they, you have to still be focused on um, managing it, like your timing, making sure that you know that you are managing your pricing tool. Like AI is great, um, automations are great, but at the end of the day, you still have to have someone behind that, that, that technology managing it. And that's as we also realize that we have to be 
more active in our business and, and, and kind of create the roles. And that's around the time I, I said Jade is our pretty much our operations and uh, was a sales manager. Like, uh, so your operations and sales, because you manage our, also our cleaning staff and everything that's going on with there. And that was a really eye opening. So that was a learning month, which I think is a great time to do it. Yes, yes, yes. It was um, the whole year was super interesting because we learned um, a lot in regards to what things um, are important to running our business. And of course, the revenue, what we earn, that's a major motivator. Yeah. Um, but also making sure that we are keeping into consideration how much we're spending. So our expenses, we're not going to go over completely our expenses because I just personally feel like every business is going to run a little bit different. Um, so I think earnings for me and my, um, in my brain are more important because your expenses, you can kind of, you know, you have more control over it. Like you don't have to give out snacks, which we give out snacks, which I want to cut, but <laughs> learn, um, in regards to like, what's really important about managing your business is like claims and documentation. Like I spend a lot of time on Reddit. And it interests me so much how many um, hosts believe like certain things. Is, it's just the cost of doing business. It's just the cost of doing business. It's like everything's the cost of doing business. And being that I did come from um, car sales, but I also rented cars before. And one thing they preach to you is risk management and making sure that if there's claims that need to be filed, like you need to file them because that is an expense for your business. And if I think everything is a cost of doing business, I'm just never really going to make any money because the amount of stuff people damage yeah, is incredible. So speaking of that, um, with our first unit, we saw how some of the items that we purchased were not really great for Airbnb, like the type of couch we bought. Um, um, one of the things I've learned, and I just told a friend of mine uh, last night about this, don't buy things because they're on sale and you think you're going to need it in the future. It's better to pay the little extra then when you're ready to buy it because what tends to happen is time. And in between time, you tend to do something like learn things. Um, so you realize that, oh, maybe I don't need this because of this, right? So as we thought we were saving money on our our original couch, which we got it for like less than 200 bucks with like shipping and everything included. Um, I couldn't, it was going to cost so much to repair the, the little repairs we wanted to do. And the color alone was a light cream color that just really doesn't make sense. Like I don't suggest light colors for Airbnb. I don't, because it's hard cleaning and things show up really quick. So we also got, you know, um, uh, Bed, we got we didn't get bed frames proper bed frames like I highly suggest only doing uh, solid wood and metal bed frames for example and staying away from uh, you know certain coffee tables and the more stuff you have in there the more you're gonna have to clean the more time it's yeah. gonna take and and neat things are not a great idea um, we originally went to a um, antique shop and yeah, it take responsibility literally the first well, guest broke one of um the vases near base or how you say that yeah they broke it like the, and it was funny because they broke it they were cleaning up to leave and they broke it and what else did they do they still not fixed side tables beautiful side tables antique wooden side tables look amazing. oh i forgot about those tables exactly. where are they they're never coming back well, because when we bought it, they were slightly broken. It was, it was an antique shop, so it was slightly broken. It was fragile. Yes, they were fragile. It wasn't broken. It was fragile. Yeah. Um, and we learned that, and so like Those, we all, they were cute though. Yeah, they're they're cute in that in that store. <laughs> I forgot too. they were in there. Um, and so we realized that there are certain types of things that you need to do because we like. And we are looking to buy things that we can easily replace. So the uniqueness of things, unless it's a painting or something, and even then, I would suggest like one of the biggest things is painting behind us. I'm excited to um, do just a print version of it and take this one out because again, if like we just had guests who had six kids who literally just dirtied and tore up the house, and if they would have 
harming this painting, I would have been like heartbroken because it's one of a kind. Well, and they never would've... have one of a kind thing. They would have been heartbroken because <laughs> they would have got charged. And yeah. Um, shout out to the artist, uh, like, but he's mm-hmm. he, he's not cheap. Let's just yeah, say that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I mean, this is a five figure uh, painting that was done for us, which is a great thing, but. Again, you don't want stuff like that in your Airbnb. So yeah. what we do in when it comes to claims and documentation, we have put a system together. So before our our cleaners touch anything, we go through and have them video. And then after when they're going through videoing and they're cleaning through this, the cleaning process, they're taking pictures and uploading those pictures. And then they're also um, at the end of the cleaning, we're also um, taking a video of how it is before our guests come in for every single guest. And um, and let me tell you, the amount of untruth that are in people when it comes to them doing wrong is ridiculous. So we have uh, gotten that part of documentation down. We're yeah. working on better ways to store all that information because, like I said, we've hosted over 100. Yeah, well over 100. 100. It was like yeah. 150. Um, stays. And I mean, it's not common for people to try to do false claims, but do they? Yes, they do. And um, it's interesting because how they go about it, sometimes it's just so easy to disprove that they're not being truthful. Especially to, um, I, I think most guests do not know that Airbnb hosts are actually taking pictures of their places before you get you get to um, stay there. Yeah. I think they assume that we have no way of tracking what the place looks like or what's going on. And it, um, the stories we get, those are also funny too, because it'll be, oh, well, I saw that when I arrived. And then it turns into, how you don't know it was the people after me? <laughs> Wait, right. did you see it when you arrived? Or is it the people after? Because two things can't happen. Like, it either was already there or it was the people after. Um, So, yeah, so we've gotten pretty good at tracking that. And I would say one thing that helped us um, a lot in regards to, like, claims, policies, and procedures, and all that good stuff was just watching videos on YouTube. Yeah. Sean, what's his name? Sean Rockovich. Can't say that man's last name. But he... um, He's the one who also motivated us to, like, if someone stays your house, charge them. I even went to one of um, my friends. She rented an Airbnb for um, a retreat. And even there, it was a sign that said, if you stain a towel, it's $40. I'll never charge someone $40 for a stained towel. And we usually don't even charge if it's, like, one stained towel. But if you come and you vomit everywhere and you stain mm-hmm. several things, yeah. Uh, we learned don't feel bad about filing claims like that's just a part of the business and there is a way that you can strategically file these claims so that you don't have to fear retaliation so the next thing that like we learned is like airbnb airbnb support and kind of how like your relationship will be with them um they're not your friend okay so (laughs) Let, let, let me say it like this. If you are just in, there's a difference between Airbnb support for super hosts and just regular hosts or co-hosts who don't have that, that mm-hmm. status. And we can tell the difference. Um, if you are just a regular and you don't have super hosts, they're more likely to side with the guests and, and treat you like if you were um, chopped liver. I think it's the best way to say it because <laughs> the story of we had a guest who occupied our home or when the conquistadors came back to Puerto Rico and Jade reached out to them because I was busy. She was just trying to, you know, just get it going and help out. And this is what we're learning. This is around the time we're learning our roles, right? And kind of identifying those. And they had her crying. I come home one day, she's crying because the guy is arguing with her saying, how do you know this? What do you mean this? I realized the support person was just, 
he just did not want to um, take down the retaliatory review. And that was one thing we learned, too, about the review process is that you really have to advocate for yourself because they will try to play you. Because um, he was like, you're trying to manipulate the review policy. And I was like, the only reason why you feel like I'm manipulating it is because you know I'm being truthful. You just want to look and try to say that I'm not being honest because you don't want to take it down and then that's when he got mad and then um yeah yeah he and hung up on me and told me and then sent me a message talking about he was gonna mark something on my file and I, I i was always a good kid like overall i mean i did a couple of sneaky things but i was a good kid so telling me you marked something on my file hurt my little heart um and once i called airbnb let me tell you they said mm -hmm. we're they apologized so much and was very helpful, got to it. I mean, it was two calls. One call to tell them about what happened and, and to report that um, that, that employee, mm -hmm. um, to put a mark on his file, trying to mark our file. So we marked <laughs> his file right back um, because it was, it was unnecessary and we were literally reading the rules and regulations from Airbnb and he was not following his the own guidelines and trying to say we were manipulating, and that was not the case. And once I told them, they took care of it. It was literally done in two calls. Why it's important to not completely forever to um, just rely on Airbnb or any of these online travel agencies, which is what OTA means. Um, that was something new for me. Yeah, you don't want to allow your business. I've been looking at properties to purchase that are so-called Airbnb short-term rental businesses, but you can't give over your Airbnb business. Now, what you can do is, I have a friend who's dealt with this, and I want to really point this out before we go to the next topic, is that if someone's, if you're trying to buy a property that can be great for short-term rental, don't allow real estate agents or, or the um, owners of these properties to sell you on what it could be because you will overpay and find yourself in the Airbnb bus and the Airbnb bus when we listen to those who were complaining about it what they did was they bought properties based off of what they were making before and didn't realize didn't do a proper um, acknowledgement of what the market was doing they was yeah. in a uniqueness it was making all this money but that's why when you go to the SBA or when you, I've done mergers and acquisitions, when you're acquiring a business or you're merging a business with your own business, you don't look at just one year. You look at over a period of time that makes sense so you can come up with an average of what you can expect and you go conservative with that. Yeah. And that's why I think it's really important that you understand that and don't get caught in, oh, if you just build two more units, if you just do this, like things like that, are red flags and trust your red flags, trust your criteria and be mindful. And when you are in an Airbnb bus, when you are in an economical time where things are, are murky waters and difficult, you will be confident in what you invested in and what your goals are. Our main goal for this property, as you can see, is now um, officially a six figure business that we wanted to make sure we buy an asset and that we were able to, um, um, provide for ourselves. So the the main that's what I'm saying. Like for when it comes to profit wise, we were able to pay all our our personal expenses and we're able to take care of everything else. Make sure that we have every year personally. your your priority and your goals. I'm in mean, a lot of the, um, groups, groups on like that, that and, and here in Puerto Rico, we just talk about specifically about about our market here. here. There were, there were a, few a few things, things that, that would have happened that caused a large, large inflation in and prices, prices in regards to, um, it, it was, was like, like people coming down, down to like electricity at yeah, one point, point. So, so they think like, like the a major, major boom, boom in their rent prices, prices, prices and things, things like that. that. And, and then, then there was, was the rent and travel, COVID, which is really high prices. But a lot of people are still held onto those prices and not acknowledging that those are just special situations. It, it, yeah. Yeah. So, so then, then they, they started expanding and acquiring more um, property. And now, and now you see all of a sudden, it's like, like, um, like, 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 like,
and in October, October and November, November is so many, many short-term, short-term rentals that, that people started turning into long-term, long-term because, because yeah. they think they're, they're like, like it, it's, it's just, just not, not there, there and I might as well, well I put, put way too much effort, effort on paying, paying this property, property manager, manager, which is a large, large part, part two. two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's hard to get anyone lower than 2027 because it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah, and, you, and, and, and your, your profit margins are, are, are close. close. You can't say money by 2026. Yeah, yeah, just really the base of appreciation. You know, yeah, yeah. Which is also, I think, I think that that's really good to have, have a, another source of income. Yeah, yeah. So, so you might not do the long term at that point. Because that's usually what you're going to get. And that's what they all start like. They're like, like, this is long term. I'm like, yeah, 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 you should. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many people. I mean, I got this. Yes, yes. Make, make so sure. our last, our last, um, topic is maintenance. Um, on average, we're spending about eight percent of um our revenue on maintenance. Um, because our house here is a old house from 1935. The majority of homes in Puerto Rico or made or managed shapes by hand in it. And so, and so a lot, a lot of, the of the things that have been done, done here don't make sense, sense at all. Um, it, it's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's way too many hand 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 not not uh, messing up. We need to do, uh, you know, you know, know the, the, the um, water, water heaters heater that we brand new spent, spent still not working. working. Just, just things, things just like, like whoa, whoa, what's, what's going, going on? on? But that's, that's part of running a home. home. So one of our guests is home is a living, breathing thing, thing. And, and you have to treat it that way. Constant maintenance, constant attention. If you want to get the best out of and that's, and that's the cool thing about Airbnb or short term rental. Um, what happens is the one who rents out your property is that you can see it, touch it. Um, I mean, we don't get to the studio by much, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, still, still, being able to even have, have those little moments, and you don't have that that have um long term. They're gonna be there for a year. You you probably not gonna see it unless something goes wrong. So yeah. And then, and then and the last thing we're going to say about this whole experience is that uh, if, if you, you are, are making two times your expenses on an Airbnb, Airbnb then that's a good investment. So we'll look at that. I got to meet you too, sir. But thank you guys so much for watching us. Um, I want to say make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to get any more information about like the details of things, just Put it in the comment section. Let us know. Like I want to know those nitty gritty numbers, and we will look to make a video like that. Bye. Bye, everyone.